All right, let's dive into it. So unfortunately, I had to have this, um, this meeting. There are um, thousands and thousands of businesses getting sued right now because of their websites not being ADA compliant. So what that pretty much means is if somebody blind or deaf you know, goes into a local business and there's not the correct handrails, there's not the correct handicap parking, there's not the correct bathrooms, you know, that um, person with that disability could sue that business for not being compliant at the workplace. Well, the problem is, is the law is so vague for online that um, people are taking advantage of that. And what's happening is there's these lawyers going out there. Uh, as an example, 2,500 restaurants just got sued in Tampa in a month um, because their websites would not allow someone blind um, to order or look at their menu. Um, so I know this, uh, you know, we can fix this, but I just want to make sure everyone's aware of it and, you know, set up next year, they're going to be passing a new law um, that, to make it so it's not vague anymore. They're going to be very specific. This is exactly what you need to do on your website. So hopefully everyone just gets prepared for that. Um, some scary things are if you do get a lawsuit against you and your website, the minimum settlement I've heard is around $10,000. So right there, you're already, you know, you don't, you have to settle for around 10,000 or go to court. And the problem with going to court, since the law is so vague, which we'll show you these, is it's up to the judge to decide, which we none of us wants to want to be in that position. And I apologize for hopefully not scaring you, but just making you aware that this is a, a possible thing and we need to take care of it now. So let's run through a couple of big ones. Target got sued. They had to pay out $6 million um, to this corporation. Harvard University got sued. And surprisingly, Netflix got sued. Now, the laws are pretty vague because right now it's if you have a, a website and a local business, right? So, but Netflix still had to pay $755,000, even though they didn't have a local business. Um, I'm going to send everyone this PDF after with these links. So feel free to do your research and look into this more. Um, H&R Block made sense, Winn-Dixie made sense, and Domino's made sense because they had a website and they had a local local business. You know, it didn't make sense for me, but we got to figure this out. So $100,000 for H&R Block. When dixie had to settle for an undisclosed amount. And through an entire court case, they finally got to the judge and the judge's decision ordered that Domino's pay the plaintiff $4,000 in damages because he couldn't order a pizza on their website and claimed that um, waiting on the phone for 40 minutes to order his pizza um, was too long. So you know, $4,000, you know, is a lot, but doesn't sound like a lot. But then you think about all your lawyer fees. I'm sure it was well in the hundreds of thousands for this. So um, these are just some major ones. Feel free to look through these, do your research on them. Um, but it's really pretty interesting. Um, just a couple more. These are, were all settled for undisclosed amounts. But this is the interesting part. The, none of these are local businesses. These are all um, online businesses only. Um, and we'll see the trend keep going up, you know, just last year, 11,000, but I think it's, it's basically going to double this year um, because some crazy lawyers out there are taking advantage of this. As an example, the one in Tampa, Florida, you know, he's just going after restaurants, this lawyer, and just trying to settle with them for 10,000 each. So um, you can definitely check out that article. Um, so what this means for us, I want to show you guys this example here on the right. You know, I highly recommend everyone get this software on your site. Um, you'll see it's for motor impaired, the blind, dyslexia, color, even colorblind, ADHD, um, seizure, visually impaired, deaf. So we want to make sure your website complies with all of them. And, um, you know, the Department of Justice, like I mentioned, was super vague on this, um, on exactly, you know, goods, services, privileges, or activities like um, including those offered on websites. Right now, the law is pretty vague, so it's up to the judge to decide if you get that far. Um, but next year, they've actually created a plan, which you can read that article here, that that plan is going to give tell us exactly what we need to do. They're going to say, okay, you need this software and you need to fix everything to be in compliance. So that will be good next year, but I don't, you know, we don't want to risk it up until then. Um, you know, some things that they look for is the color contrast, which Mike will help, you know, explain a little bit more um, what you do with your images. So you'll see that we can install the software, uh, but you're only going to get about 90% compliant there. 
I want to show you a couple of local businesses here I did a search for. So this is just a local hair salon and not to pick on anyone, uh, but I just ran a quick report of their homepage, you know, 24 violations just on their homepage. And so I think, you know, lawyers are just taking these websites and they're putting them through these tests. And I'm sure if you just have one or two violations, they're going to go after you much more. They're probably really going to go after you. So we want to make sure everyone gets your website checked, at least see what, what your violations are and how you can fix those. Um, here's a local gym that we that we work with, 48 violations on their homepage alone. Um, you'll see all these different violations here. And that's somebody that they wanna go to the website, they wanna learn about the gym, and then they wanna go work out. So they're basically saying, hey, you're not allowing somebody that has a disability to learn more about you and come work out with you. You're not being compliant, even if they're compliant at the gym. This one is the most interesting to me, and this is kind of why I wanted Mike uh, you know, I want Mike on here to explain this a little bit more. This uh, local lawyer here, she's got that ADA compliance widget on her on her website. So if we go back here, this widget here that pops up, she has this on her site, but 150 violations all on her homepage still. So she thought she did the right thing. She added the, the widget. And up until a couple of weeks ago, I thought the same thing. I thought, all right, we'll just install this widget on everyone's site and they'll be good to go. When in reality, the widget does nothing, you know, it does about 90% of the work. But look, she's got the widget and sells 150 violations on just her homepage, not even counting the entire website. Um, these are tons of things like this text. Michael will talk more about this, the title text, the way the image looks with the colors what the image is called, how you save the image and the name, because these softwares will actually read the name of these images. Um, they'll check the, the contrast of the colors, but then there's all these little things you still gotta work on and fix. So install the software. You know, I think this is, I think everyone should install the software. Um, it's Mike, Mike, you help people install this software on their site. It's not the hardest thing to do, but you know, once you install that software, then you need to do a report after. So install software and then check your report after you get 90% compliant. And then you have that um, the report to go off and fix. Um, you need statements on your site and the software will even protect you up to a $10,000 uh, protection guarantee. So, uh, but it won't protect you 100%, which we wanna cover a little bit more on these. So at least we need to get everyone with this software on their site right away um, and get those reports out. Um, this is a pretty interesting one. So Nike was thought they were compliant. Um, they thought they were compliant on their website. Um, Maria went to the site and found that those images and texts were missing links. So this is all coding stuff. Um, the link texts were wrong and redundant links. Three really minor things I thought um, were minor. Um, they thought, I'm sure Nike thought they were good, um, but in all reality, they still had some of these issues, violations on their site, even though they thought they were good and they had to settle for an undisclosed amount. Up to the judge. We don't want the judge to decide. So Michael, if you want to hop in, everyone, Mike, this is Michael with ADA Compliance Firm. He's helping me. We partner together and he's helping me make sure we're on the right track and making sure everything gets fixed. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, so there's a few things that I want to go over just to Give you an understanding of what the app does um, and how it's also important to have the manual checks on top of it. Uh, so a misconception is that the uh, tool will just catch everything and fix it for you. In reality, the tool's just masking the website. Um, so it's just kind of changing the contrast a little bit or you know helping it for screen readers to be able to read things correctly. Uh, but there are a few things that the app can't do and that's why you need to do these manual checks. Um, so the image on the right um, is the same image that Brad's been using, uh, the same tool that he's been using, uh, sorry, on the left. <laughs> uh, that helps to identify possible violations. Um, again, they're not going to catch everything. If you look at the image on the right, uh, this is showing the MC, the blue uh, field, there's 29 manual checks. Now that's just 29 in this uh, overall category. If we was go into it in a further level, um, the landmarks might actually have another 100 manual checks um, inside that. Um, so the deeper we go, the more we'll find. Um, so it is important to make sure you're going through these things, uh, making sure again, your alt um, text on images is correct. Um, because that's just some stuff that, you know, the, the tools just can't change 
that it doesn't know what the image is, you still got to help it along a little bit. I can go to the next slide. Um, with the images, yep. Michael, um, that's basically how you save your image in, in your website, right? Um, this is like the name that you call that image in the back end. Um, so not necessarily the name in the back end. Uh, what the alt value is, is uh, the name in the back end is just how the website uh, finds the image to display it. What the alt text does is it adds something for the screen reader to grab onto. Um, so let's say you've got a picture of a man holding a cup of tea. Your alt text should say man holding cup of tea. Um, you know, so that's that's kind of what you're looking for. You're just adding that alt value onto the image. Yeah, because a blind person goes to your site and they see a bunch of no-name images, they're not going to know or see anything. Makes exactly. sense. Um, so with manual check-in, um, what you're able to do is find issues in the code that tools aren't able to detect, uh, especially with things like images as well. Um, the, the tool doesn't know what the image is. You've got to tell it what the image is. Um, they're not smart enough to detect colors of images either. Um, so you might have some manual checks that come up and it's giving you a lower score on these checks. Uh, that's just because the manual check needs to know what that color is. Um, let's say you've got a white website, okay? Um, and then you have, if you look at the uh, the slide here, it's got a dark blue with white text. The contrast on that is great. Uh, however, the um, these tools are reading that you've got a white website with white text. So obviously the contrast doesn't quite match up there. Um, so that might seem like a violation, whereas obviously it's not because you do have an image overlaying. Uh, but the reverse could be said, you could have um, a white image with white text over the top of it. Now the tool thinks that it's compliant. Uh, it thinks that, you know, you've got a good contrast there, um, but the image is actually blending the text in. So you've got to be careful with that. Um, while the tool is installed, uh, like I say, you're just covering up the violation. So if you click on um, a contrast, let's say, uh, it will identify all the text, put a nice little uh, background on it and make sure that all the uh, text pops out. However, like I say, with that tool isn't there, you've not actually fixed the issue. You're just covering it up with the tool. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. Definitely. And we do have a question, Mike, um, from Mark. Hey, Mark, thanks for asking. Um, real people doing the manual checks, or is it still the software? Um, so yeah. Michael does both. He does the software report, and then he manually checks everything. But Yeah, so the, the software catches most things. That'll just save time, mostly. Um, so we always run through the software tools just to get a good overview of what the issue is. Um, but you have to go in and manually check it because there's some stuff that the software will detect as manual checks, which is great. We can just go in, but there's other things that it's not finding. Um, so there's sometimes when I'll go into a website and I'll find something that's an issue that hasn't come up on the report. Um, so these tools are just to kind of give us a vague overview of, you know, where you might kind of sit uh, with, with the issues. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I'll get to so other is... questions, Mark, in a minute. Uh, this is um, an example of a website that we're building a study on. Um, the image is obviously showing uh, a time to load stuff. Uh, so this is actually the time to load the accessibility tool. Now this is showing nearly 40 seconds, um, which is quite a long time when you look at web development these days. Uh, websites should be very snappy and should load very fast. So this could be an issue on either the development end where they've not loaded it in the correct order. Um, it could just be that there's so much going on on this website that it's trying to load everything that it can and it's just taking this long for it to actually render that tool onto the screen. We can go to the next slide. Jeez, so 40 seconds, that's yeah. pretty bad. Um, well, uh, this is this is the kicker though. That was on a 350 megabits per second download speed. Um, that's relatively fast. If you think the average uh, American household is 119 megabits per second, that load time is now two minutes. Now, if you think of somebody on a slower connection, a mobile connection out in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, you, you could be looking five to 10 minutes just to load this website because the performance just isn't there. Um, now you can see the image at the bottom. I've just done a quick report um, on their performance. This is actually one of the easiest criteria to achieve 100 on because um, it just goes through very basic things that any web developer should be, uh, should be focusing on. Um, and obviously 69% on performance just isn't, Going to uh, going to help you there. So you can um, get that to a hundred. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, we we'll go to the next slide, and I'll expand on this a little bit more. Um, so why? I hate that... I hate seeing these. By the way, I'm sure That's everyone horrible. has seen these. <laughs> uh, Dustin, <laughs> uh, real quick, Dustin has a question: USA or worldwide? I've seen lawsuits worldwide. 
um, definitely picking up in the U.S. because of the, the law issues. I know you're in Canada, so I'll do a little more research on that, Dustin. Yeah, most of this is for ADA, so the Americans with Disability Act, yeah. um, and that's going into effect because they're doing, they're kind of looking into it a lot more, and they're releasing more um, more laws on it, and they're going to refine it a lot more. And um, so this is why we're focusing on this area specifically right now. Great, Dustin's in Canada. You said it's called ACA, so I'm sure it's the same thing. I'll do a little more research for you, Dustin. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so to go into it a little bit further, why is that widget not loading? Uh, there can be a bunch of reasons why. One of them is the performance of the website. It's just taking too long for that widget to actually appear on the website. Um, but there are reasons why it might not load at all. Uh, now, users can manually block JavaScript um, in their browsers. Um, the thing with that is it is a security concern. JavaScript can be used maliciously. Um, if you load in a very dodgy website, um, in the past, there's been a lot of issues with JavaScript. Um, so some people do just turn it off um, naturally. Now, it's a lot safer now, but people are still cautious. Uh, a user could be using an old or outdated browser. So if you think back to how many times you might have postponed a Windows update or a mobile phone update, or you know, a pop-up comes up and you just say postpone. Um, if you do that long enough, it's just going to get more and more out of date. And it's very prevalent in um, older generations, but younger generations are doing it as well. Uh, so just making sure that everything is up to date and you can't always rely on you know, the end user making sure their stuff is up to date. Um, there's also the chance that it fails to post from the server. Um, so that's a little bit rarer, but there's a few conditions where if your internet drops out a little bit, the server's internet drops out a little bit, uh, packets get miss, uh, go missing uh, during transit. There's, tons of reasons why something might not post. All it takes is a quick refresh of the website, which usually fixes these issues. Um, but if someone's loaded it and the widget's not there, then again, you're not really covered um, by the widget. Uh, so this is why we always say that, I mean, the software is great. It'll cover you for 99% of all issues, um, as long as it's also manually checked in the background to make sure your website's there. Uh, but the best defense is just solving the root cause of the issue and using the tool to complement uh, the website. So you might have added a blog post and there's, you know, new content there that's not been properly checked. Uh, the tool's probably just going to pick that up and, you know, solve that for you. But you want to make sure that the core site is compliant. Like the home page, about page, contact page, et cetera. Exactly. That's those static pages that you're not necessarily going to change. You just want to make sure they are completely set. Yeah. I think, it, you know, if you get to a certain point too, and you show that you've been trying, you got your main pages covered, you have the software, you should be pretty good, but you know, I don't think the software is going to just cover them on that. Absolutely. Uh, so the final bit, just to uh, conclude it all down, it's just tips, tips to prevent uh, ADA non-compliance. So again, audit your website, make sure it's compliant, do the manual checks um, and get those fixed as quickly as possible and just use the tool to complement those checks that you've done. Um, there's plenty of software out there as well. Um, you can see some examples on the slide that helps visually impaired users uh, and users access the website. Uh, then rectify all accessibility violations that the audit report reveals. Obviously go through the code, make sure you've got the alt, uh, alternate text on the images. Um, use a policy that, um, that shows the accessibility. Um, so we'll actually install a little policy statement for you as well. Um, and that's required to be compliant. Yep. Um, provide an online accessibility statement. Um, so in the company's contract information, um, to make sure people with disabilities have the option of, re of reporting any ADA uh, compliance violations. And uh, just back up your software solutions with manual testing. So every now and again, just go in. And um, this is what we do every month. We'll make sure uh, there's a report. The app itself also reports to us if it's detected something within uh, within that month. Um, so we've got automatic checks feeding back to us. Um, we've also got the manual checks that we do every month just to make sure that you are compliant in the core website itself. Perfect. And so just so everyone's aware, I partner with Mike on this. So um, definitely would refer having him install the software so it loads fast and also doing the manual testing because that's all that coding is a whole, no whole nother ball game there. So, so Michael... So you're going to provide the complete report for everyone. We'll run their site through it, um, install the software on their site, and then you'll go and actually fix all of those um, those manual issues. Absolutely. Um, most of it is just making sure that the manual checks 
are checked, first of all. Uh, sometimes yeah. they'll still come up on a report, and that's why it's there as a manual check to make sure it is compliant. Um, any of them that aren't, obviously, we go in and, um, and that'll make sure you're compliant. Okay. Now, if anyone has any questions, I've, we got a couple of questions here. I told everyone I'd try to keep it short. We went over 15 minutes, but um, let me get through these real quick. And if anyone has any questions, uh, make sure to ask them in the chat or just turn your audio on. So if a law firm sends a, hey, Mark, thanks for all the questions. Law firm sends a demand letter. Do you have to pay it? So when the demand letter comes, they're basically going to give you two options from what I've seen. And I'm sure every case is different. And by the way, there's a link I added. I'll send everyone that shows 564 pages of um, current lawsuits going on right now, which is crazy. Um, so I think they just give you two options, settle. And I think the it's around $10,000 to settle, or they're going to take you to court and let the judge decide, which we all know no one wants to do. Certification covers um, that you're compliant to a certain point, right? You got the software, which is going to get about 90%. Then you want those accessibility statements in your site, like in the footer, you can put them in the footer, make sure those are in there. And then a manual check every month just to make sure um, everything's looking good. Dustin, it is crazy. When I saw the 2,500 lawsuits in just in Tampa, um, Tampa, Florida, um, that was pretty surprising to me in one month. There, you've just got these lawyers that are going after you know small businesses and they can do whatever they want. So let's get fixed first before you get that. Hey, Carol, a nonprofit that doesn't sell any products, but we do receive donations. I mean, they're, they, they're going to go after everyone. I think you guys definitely should be compliant on your site. Get that, at least get the software going and get, you know, the homepage compliant manual checked. Um, that way you're just, you're safe there. Um, thanks, Mark, on that. Run by gov government in Canada. Anyone else have any other questions for Mike or for me? Um, and then I'll kind of give you next steps on what we should do. Mike, anything uh, we I didn't cover? I do want to cover, because um, we are partnered, um, doing a partnership here, we are giving a 30% off for people who Brad's referring. Um, so if you just put Brad into the uh, coupon field on checkout, um, then you do get 30% off all of our packages. Perfect. Um, I'm going to, you know, I recommend, you know, I know everyone on here um, on this Zoom, I would recommend just doing this middle package you get that 30% off and Mike will install the software. I'll get him your website logins, you know, as long as you give me the thumbs up. Um, if I don't have it, you know, he'll email you all that information, install the software and fix the errors on the site um, from that manual check. So Mike, do you, do you fix like if you're going to send them something that looks like this, right? Let me go back this one, but it shows um... all the different errors. Yeah, we'll kind of put a percentage figure on it as well. So we'll kind of break it down just so it makes more sense to you. This is what we do. We go through, we create an audit report for you. Um, and we just make sure you understand, you know, how good or how bad your website is in compliance. Um, again, just one violation can mean a lawsuit and depends on the violation. Uh, so we just want to make sure that's down as much as possible um, and hopefully get it to zero. Great. All right. Sounds good. And so they can just go to your site. I would say go to ADA compliance, Mike's site and do this middle one. Make sure you put my name in for the 30%. Thanks for doing that, Mike. I appreciate that. Yep. Um, how soon can you get this installed? I've, we have a couple of law firms on this webinar also. I would assume law firms probably <laughs> need to be compliant ASAP, right? Yeah, if uh, if people are going to you for <laughs> compliance, you know, you want to make sure that your website is compliant. Otherwise, you're on their radar already. Yep, exactly. And, you know, everyone, I thought the software would be good. But the more and more we're seeing about this, the, the less I trust just the software, especially with these suits. All right, John, look at the setup on your site. Um, thanks for joining the webinar. Um, anyone else have any questions? I know I was thinking of you, Dustin and Sean. You guys have e-commerce sites. You know, at first we thought e-commerce sites were were safe because you didn't have that local business. Um, but now since the law is so vague, they're going to definitely clean up the law next year, uh, which will probably tell you to do this exact same thing. But right now they're so vague. It could be for, we'll go back to these case studies real quick, unfortunately. Amazon's online, Blue Apron's online, and Fox News is online. They all had lawsuits towards them. H&R Block, Winn-Dixie, and Domino's are all local, so I guess that makes a little bit more sense with the law, but um, still, 
still pretty crazy there. So I will make sure I, I don't think anyone else has any questions. It looks like I'll make sure I email this slide to everyone. Um, I'll give you Mike's info with that link and the discount code. And then I'll make sure that um, we get this installed on your site right away. Uh, I think that's it. Mike, anything else? Uh, Brad, I got no, a question. It. Sean. Hey, Sean. So um, is there a one-time fee and then ongoing fees or how is that working out with regard to the setup and uh yep it's a one-time fee for mike to go through and fix all those errors and then the monthly fee for the software and that's you said you have this software on your site uh -huh. um that's that's the monthly fee and that's where they'll protect you for this software actually give you like a ten thousand dollar litigation protection guarantee uh -huh. if you use it can you disclose the fee right now or do we have to just go into the website? Yeah, uh, there's three of them. So it's based on how much traffic comes to oh. your site. So you'll, right. you'll probably be on their, their lowest cost plan. Um, and then, and then it just goes up from there. Once you have like hundreds and thousands of people coming to your website. So, so as the company grows, the, the cost might go up. Exactly. Okay. I don't think it's, it's crazy. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Sean. I didn't think you had to do it, but I guess you do with the e-commerce. Carol, did you have any other questions about the nonprofit? Oh, looks like you're muted. Hopefully I answered it. Yeah, no, thanks. Thank you. No questions. Okay, cool. I mean, I think your nonprofit goes right along with this, um, just in a different, you know, country. So you're... Uh, Carol ha has a nonprofit that helps uh, the blind. It, her wife is um, is a doctor that goes over and helps. So actually, Carol, give us a quick summary of that. Sorry to break up the... Oh, uh, no problem. No, yeah, we're a nonprofit uh, medical ministry that focuses on world blindness. So we go and do um, surgical outreaches and establish um, eye programs in hospitals in developing countries where there's a high incidence of blindness. So that our website is really the main traffic is people wanting to contribute to that mission. But we do get some international um, interest of people who want to volunteer. So yeah, that's awesome. no products, no products sold. So right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's cool. I just wanted you to say that because I think it's awesome what you guys do. So keep oh. up the good work. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Yep. All right. Well, cool. I recorded this. I'll send everyone the recording and uh, the PDF and just let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll connect you with Mike's email too. So thanks everyone for joining and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks.